Hi, welcome to the video. In today's video, we'll be looking at the Canon P. For those of you who ain't aware, the Canon P is a 35mm rangefinder camera. The Canon P was manufactured from 1958 up until 1961 in Japan and was designed to be an accessible option for photographers. The P in the Canon P name stands for Popolaire. The camera comes with a Leica thread mount, which means it's accessible to a whole wide range of lenses. Canon manufactured a range of lenses for this camera which are made to a high quality, but they still are actually quite affordable compared to some of their Leica counterparts. It has a shutter range of one to one thousandth of a second. It also features a metal horizontal traveling focal plane shutter, um, which is a little bit unusual on, cam on these kind of cameras, usually it's a fabric one, but the fabric ones can deteriorate over time, whereas the metal ones, they still remain in good condition despite appearing wrinkly at times. The viewfinder is simple and straight to the point. It has parallax correction for 35, 50 and 100 mm lenses with the frame lines all in on one frame. So you haven't got the over complex mechanism of something to switch it in and out like you do on the Leicas. This, was, this feature is something that helped kept the manufacturing costs down and in turn the retail costs down of the camera, which makes it quite an accessible alternative to say a Leica M3. So moving on to form following the functions, I think it's clear to see that it's a classic camera for a reason. Its looks are striking, it, they're clear, they're concise. Um, it's, you can see how it evokes ideas of the Leica cameras, M cameras, but it still, remem it still keeps its own distinct di design language. Everything is really clear and laid out, and so it's photography in its simplest form. So why did I get this camera? Well, if we go back to December, when the World Cup was on, and a certain Leo Messi scoring an extra time. Um, basically, that's the reason why I got this camera. Um, because for the World Cup, I had a sweepstake with my mates, and we all put in money, and I had Argentina. So I ended up winning the money. <laughs> and so with this windfall, I was like, how can I spend this? Um, and lo and behold, I found this camera online. Um, found a lens separately as well for a good price and bundled them together. I think this camera sort of came at the right time for me. Um, I was on a bit of a photography drought um, where a couple of months gone by and I ain't really had the urge to make photos or go out and take photos. Um, but getting this camera, it's just the form factor of it, the simple simplicity of it, just holding it in your hands, I think it just made me want to go out and just get some photos and just it reignited that spark, I think. And I think sometimes you just need that little ignition just to kick things off. So I've only, so as of this video, I've only shot one roll of film in this camera, and that was a roll of Fuji um, Color 200, not C200, the Kodak Gold Edition. Um, I took this camera as me, with me as a counterpart to making the Dehancer review, which was my previous video. Um, <clears throat> And it was quite nice just to sort of carry it around because it's not too big, it's not too intrusive. You can carry it around your neck and just get on with, get on with things. I think there was a problem with the camera. Um, in the slower shutter speeds, I think specifically one eighth of a second, and I'm assuming in the even slower ones, um, there's a problem with um, the shutter drag. And you can see where half the image is not exposed properly and the other half is. Um, with a little bit of research, I found out that the, this can be sorted out. It's routine maintenance and it's CLA. Um, it's a bit of a downer because obviously it's, it's quite, it'd be quite nice just to get a camera out of the box and there's nothing wrong with it. But this is the reality, this is an old camera. I mean, it's decades old, so to have something. And this is the only real problem that it's got, so I come away pretty lucky, really. Some of my favourite images that I took from that roll, um, ones which weren't cropped in half by the share, but was when I went on a trip to Barry Island, particularly some of the ones at the roller coasters and with some of the signage and stuff, I think the sharpness in that lens, you can get quite a lot of detail in there, even though you're only shooting on 35mm. I think I'll probably use this camera predominantly in urban environments because it's the classic thing of like the rangefinder for street photography sort of thing. Um, but I did take it out and do some landscape stuff with it as well. Um, but I think, to be honest, I 
tend to go on the S SLR sort of route for bigger landscape things. And, and that's purely on a personal preference, really, and there's no real logical explanation as to why it sort of just feels like the right camera. But the size and shape, weight of this thing, I mean, it's a really good travel camera you can take around. I mean, you, and the lenses themselves are actually quite small, so I mean, if you're going away somewhere for the weekend or on a holiday or something, you could take this with two or three lenses and a small camera bag, and it wouldn't be an issue at all. It's still early days with this camera, to be honest, but I'm pretty happy with it. I think I've had my eye on it for probably about, it must have been about a year until I finally decided to get one. So I was pretty sure I wanted one. Obviously there's the, obviously the elephant in the room, is like, is it a viable alternative to Leica? Um, I've never owned a Leica, <laughs> but I, I, you have to say it is, because there is a gap, there's a, there's a wall with a Leica, like, unless you've got a certain amount of money, you ain't gonna get your hands on one, whereas this is a lot more accessible and affordable, and it can perform a majority of tasks. It's a Leica Fred mount camera, so you've got access to a lot of those lenses, bar the M mount lenses. Um, but so I think it's a good platform to build off, and, and even if it comes, say, a year, two years down the line, when I've got this set up, and then I think, ooh, I might treat myself to a Leica, I've got the lenses to cross over into that without much of an issue. Um, but I think, honestly, if, if you want a rangefinder and you haven't, or you've owned some of the cheaper rangefinders before, but you want to take that next step up and you don't have, like, a money, this is a viable alternative. And I think it's often called a Leica alternative or a poor man's Leica, but I think in its own right, it's a very, very good camera, and I think it's still popular to this day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what you're seeing, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to use promo code LAP3510 to get 10% off Dehancer Pro. Dehancer Pro is a color grading and film emulation plugin for video editing software such as Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. It's great for mimicking those looks of cinema stocks or even just normal regular 35mm stocks such as Lone Chrome Purple or Kodak Portrait 400. Uh, I use it to color grade these videos and to, get, to give them that film effect because I can't afford to shoot on film uh, <laughs> to make these videos. So if you like what you see, head over to Dehancer and purchase yourself the plugin and use the code to get 10% off. Catch you in the next one.